Ma me vana se ma Pen Dream TV. Pen Dream TV die o se dem yopo. Ah, uh, uh, you know. Oh, our economy as has been discussed is a deliberate government intervention to support and to encourage businesses so that they will be able to run 24 hours. So we have three shifts. Now, currently, most businesses and um, I would say state institutions run um, eight-hour economy. Now, when we talk about 24 hours economy, some people are also like, okay, so how is government agencies going to run this 24-hour economy? But uh, for the discussion, and as we keep on um, uh, indicating, saying that people are, are the thing that government is going to put measures in place. Government is creating a conducive atmosphere to encourage the private sector, especially, to thrive, to be able to run 24 hours. So if private sector, let's say a business or an industry is running just eight hours, now you have the opportunity to expand the, the, the industry by employing two sets of uh, people. So that's if you are running three uh, shifts. And this is a game changer in the sense that um, now we have a lot of unemployment. We have um, a lot of students being chained out at the end of every year. And these individuals seem not to really see how the future looks like for them. And again, if our finance minister, I mean our finance minister some time ago, said that um, the government sector is choked and the public sector is also choked. So if these areas are choked, then the only place that you know, young ones can't look up to for employment is the private sector. But sadly enough, you know, we have government more or less also collapsing the private sector. Collapsing it through some of the policies that they, they roll out in a sense of maybe uh, collapse of banks, you know, that most private sectors, you know, uh, look up to or, yeah, they look up to, to, to get to loan, thrive. you know, to thrive. Now, but, a lot of but, banks but have been collapsed. It, 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 and it, it, we have also seen an increase in tariffs and also in taxes. So it's kind of choked a lot of um, businesses. And we have seen a lot of businesses collapse over the years because of the unconducive atmosphere for them to thrive. But, you know, the, the banks collapse, for example. Um, it definitely had rippling effects on the businesses because they were the ones supporting the businesses. Yep. So we, we had the banks collapse, we had unemployment coming from the bank, and then we had its rippling effects also affecting businesses, also increasing even unemployment because these businesses have collapsed due to the fact that they cannot get these loans from the banks no more. But the, the, the action by the government is backed by legal, uh, with a legal frame or the policies that establishes the banks. So the, the, the banks, the finance minister will say, well, we safeguard the economy by, you know, looking into these banks' activities and, and streamlining them to fix what the policy requires for banks to do. That's what the explanation will actually, you know, um, look like or seem to be. Yeah, I and mean, when you look at the developed world, um, UK, US, there were some banks that were destroyed, but um, the government saw the need to support these banks mm. by ejecting some capital and giving them some timelines within which to pay back this. And I feel that that's what, in our case, we should have done. But when you look at the whole thing, it looks like um, a kind of political gimmick. That's what a lot of people including me, read into some of the closure, I mean, some of the banks that were closed uh, because um, government, yes, felt that there were banks that were distressed. But when you even interview or you ask some of these banks, these banks were owned, uh, were, were, I mean, contractors uh, owe these banks mm -hmm. and government also owe these contractors. contractors. So it kind of uh, ripple effect. So if... The, the cycle of debt. A cycle of debt, and some of them is because of government owing contractors who have also gone to take loan from the bank but could not pay back on time. I believe that a government that care, a government that wants to see the private sector thrive, should support these banks, you know, to, to recover and give them timelines for them to pay. 
but instead they felt that what was necessary at that time was for them to close and I mean to close this bank and we have some banks that even when they send them to court um, it, it has come out that uh, what the Bank of Ghana did and for that matter the government was wrong um, a typical example of this bank has to do with the um, the uh, unique is it um, what's the name of this bank uh, the force bank you know um, it was like a deliberate target to close it. But you see, as I in indicated earlier on, the 24-hour economy is to revamp or to give the necessary energy to the economy. And His Excellency John Muhammad, the visionary leader, the one who thinks outside the box, is saying that governments who create a deliberate um, effort to support businesses, support businesses by creating and also enabling the public to feel safe going out for example you are going out in night shift or at night shift you know the time you are going you feel that you are not secure and so there will be a kind of deliberate attempt to make sure that they send a lot of security men out there to protect individuals that will be working at night and then also there will be an effort to also create to also provide reliable and cheap paths to businesses that will hook up to um, this policy. This is just an attempt to make sure that the cost of production goes down and to also encourage more businesses to hook to this um, policy in order to expand their business. We also talk about tax incentives. All this is just attempts to help the private sector that this current government have suffocated because of the increase Let in me tariffs ask about, because of uh, the unfriendly um, business environment that has been created. Let me ask about Unibank. When the banks were collapsed, Unibank was one of the banks that were declared as insolvent. So, I mean, if, if the for, maybe because he's, he's NDC, so NDC is reading political... Uh, you know, meanings into the action taken by the government or the finance minister. But if it was declared insolvent and it, the bank was truly insolvent, how is that the fault of, of government? Now, when, when you, when Dufour sent the matter to court for them to investigate whether he was indeed at fault and whether Bank of Ghana was justified, you know, it came out that um, Bank of Ghana wasn't really justified to close um, his bank? bank because when you look at it, as I said, there were a chain of events that led into some um, banks, you know, uh, being declared as insolvent. If you are owing me and you refuse to pay me, how then do you come to accuse me of not having an X amount of money? Meanwhile, you know very well that if you had paid that money, I would have had enough money to carry out my business. So I think that some of the, the issues, when you look at it, it looks like a political uh, target. But nevertheless, uh, I wouldn't want to go to that tangent, but I think that it is the responsibility of every government to protect businesses because these businesses are, uh, are the lifeline that would enable the economy to thrive. So you have collapse businesses instead of supporting them and these businesses are i mean they are individuals that are working there so you have seen a number of people you know to join the unemployed um people that are i mean the number of people who are already unemployed what have you achieved by this and when you look at the world bank um 2022 reports they indicated that um, this government have added 850,000 people to uh, push them below push the poverty line. Below the poverty line, which means that you know it appears they've worsened our condition. They've instead of they improving on the condition of individual, they have instead pushed a lot of more people back. I mean, into poverty line, and this could also be as a result of some of the policies that they implemented instead of saving a bank. And you look, you see the amount of money they use in order to collapse this bank far more than the amount of money that they needed to have uh, salvaged the situation. Salvaged the situation. So you could say that um, some of the policies, sometimes when you look at it, it looks like it's just a deliberate attempt to um, 
collapse some businesses. I have always said that there's this book, Ejapadie, and when you read it, Ejapadie tells you how and the strategy the MPP intend to put in place in order to capture certain sectors. And for me, as an individual, what book I is read, it's, it's called Ejapadi. What book is that? It's, it's circulating. I mean, who, who's the author? <laughs> for that, it's, 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 it's coming from the <laughs> MPP camp. And I read this. It's coming thing. from the MPP camp. Yes, honestly, I read this book long before the policy of collapsing of banks and this um, um, scandal, or, uh, I would say, uh, yes, issues that, that, came in 20, up. And so in 2016 uh, or 2015. It was circulating around, the, yeah, around that time. You know, and so when we started observing collapse of banks, some of us were like, okay, so could it be that it's they, feeding into what was in feeding the into whatever that is written in that book? Because the book was that they want to capture the financial sector. And these are things that they intend to do um, um, in order to capture the financial sector. You know, whilst other banks were being collapsed, there were other banks that were being protected. For example, the, um, the, the data bank, you know, they also had some challenges. But what did we see? They were protected. Meanwhile, the banks that they collapsed, could have also been protected. So again, I come back to the 24-hour economy to say that now that we have seen a lot of businesses suffocating because of the unfriendly business environment, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama have seen this as a challenge. And he says that the only way that we can revive the economy is to run 24-hour economy. so far so good. Se open online portal e Ghana. Ah, ni pa share, ni pa follow, ni pa comment here. To my best of knowledge, without any biases, I have been doing TV.